hello guys welcome back in this tutorial what we'll be talking about is the CorelDRAW user interface that is CorelDRAW 13 or CorelDRAW X3 user interface now we have the CorelDRAW already open so let's dive into creating a new file let's just create a new file so we'll go into the user interface here you go this is CorelDRAW user interface this is where every magic that needs to be done in CorelDRAW could be done though sometimes you need to move to the other part of the suit to complete some tasks but basically this is all you need in terms of when you talk about the CorelDRAW user interface now let's just start explaining it from the top here you go this bar here is called the title bar where you have Corredro X13 graphics 1 right now this file itself is not saved that is why you see it showing graphics 4 so let me just import a file to our screen so I'll click on import or rather let's not import let's open open a file I just open this bitmap vector and bitmap there you go now talking about the title bar here is the title showing vector and bitmap the CDR this is the file part where it is being saved where we opened it from but basically what you need to know about this part is that this is the bar that shows the title called the title bar next to it is called the menu bar here you have this file edit view layout arrange effect bitmap test tool windows help as the case may be it's called the word the menu bar after that what you have next is this bar here called the standard toolbar what this toolbar basically does is it gives you a brief head start to some of the shortcuts which you have in this file edit view and the rest as you can see here open new this is a new document also open by template you have your save you have your print they are all here on this file menu and the rest so if you come over here you have orders as well what this standard toolbar basically gives to you is a shortcut to what you already have in your what menu bar so next to it which is this one where you have your letter whatever it's called the property toolbar this property toolbar is very dynamic what do I mean by dynamic it changes with time right now it's on its default assuming I click on this welcome here you go it, it has changed now giving me the properties of this welcome I already wrote here now you see the the dimension the X and the Y axis you see the height you see the file size you see the file font side font type and all that here you can underline you can bold you can italic as the case may be but what you need to know is that if I should click on this for instance it changes the property toolbar changes from what you were having when we clicked on this so it is dynamic and that is one thing that is so special about it so next to it here is our toolbar this is our toolbar where you have all the tools you need to what do your maneuvers your shaping your editing and your creation of objects whatever these are the tools you need to you need to know about all these two here is on the tool bar itself so here you have some things you need to know while I before I explain that let me use the menu bar to explain it assuming you click on file here which I have already done here is an arrow on this acquire image you see an arrow showing that there is a sub menu on it and this is the sub menu you have already here 
the same thing goes for edit view and the rest they have a lot on it on this align and distribute you have a sub menu also so when you're looking for the properties themselves you have to know which one has other ones hidden inside so the same thing with the toolbar assuming this tool here this tool which is the shape tool there is an arrow pointing down if you click on the arrow you see a list here the good part is that you can click on this double line here and drag out to dock on your page so that you can easily have access assuming you're working with all these tools instead of always coming here to click and click you can just click on that drag it out and when you're done you can you can close if you close it's still here as you can see so the same thing goes for this toolbar you can undock it as you can see you can use it anywhere you want assuming it's not comfortable for you by where it is you can just take it out and what dock it anywhere you can easily access it now right now we don't want to close it because we need these tools to proceed so we that drag back to dock as you can see it's already showing that it's, it's about to dock or you just click on these two boss to dock back there you go that's nice and good so moving to our right is a color tuba where you have your color palette right now this is where you play with the colors in your test as you can see this one is pure green which is this shade of green here assuming i want it yellow i can change it but that is not readable this is far better since you already have red here as you can see so that is for the colors and if you need to see more of the colors you can pull it out and if you click out four bags sometimes you can even do a color mixture by using the advanced color yes the whole tutorial dedicated to this color so when you get there you'll be able to learn how you can play around with your colors but presently we are just talking about the ui so that is for that now what we need to know next is a standard to bar so talking about what we need to know let's just talk about adding pages we already discussed the two bar already so let's just talk about adding pages as you can see here we have page one and page two in this work as you can see now page one page two if you need to add pages within your work file you can just go to this plus sign and add pages or you can right click here and insert a page after this one if you click on it it gives you page theory and right now page theory is blank so you can also delete this page if it is not needed so that is how you can add page to your work file now navigating between pages we're already in page two assuming that i have up to four pages for instance let's just insert page add one more and right now i'm in page four and i need to go back to page one assuming we have so many and page one is not even showing right now this last arrow will take you to page one and this last one here will take you to page four and the the one in between this one here will be taking you back one more step until you get back to page one so that is how you can navigate between your pages in corridor so let's talk about something else our property toolbar we already talked about our property so let's talk about something else so right now let's just talk about our status bar right now on this page when i click on it it says here it is this is the status bar we're talking about let's just select everything here it says five objects selected on a dummy level layer and all that so in each of them if you click on it you're going to be having description for each of these words you see here so this property this status bar tells you a detailed information about what is going on on the work sheet 
on ins here you can see that when i click on different item the ins changes and all that as you can see the ins changes so the int itself is another toolbar you need to know about basically gives you a hair start about everything you're doing assuming you're a beginner you have something to read about any tool you click or any activity you're, you're performing this hint bar just give you a head start so that basically this is what you need to know about the corridor UI but before I go I want to talk about this minimize maximize and close button you see it is having here and here for this one here is centered to just this page only if I minimize this you see that there are others in between so if I maximize it's going to fill up the screen and if I go here I minimize so you can see the entire corridor itself is collapsed now you maximize it fills up the screen you minimize everything is out you maximize everything is back if you click on close this is something you have to stay away from if you're working and you're yet to save though when you click on close and you're yet to save any document corridor is going to prompt you to ask you do you want to save and if you're the type that is quick to close without reading you will lose the entire document you've labeled hard to create so always click on this close button when you're totally done with your work and all that so that is it for this tutorial next we'll be talking about images talking about the vector image and the bitmap image itself so see you in the next tutorial do it share and subscribe to our youtube channel if you've not already done that thank you